Hi everybody, it's Aid here from Dale Skidman Second Hand Tires. Welcome to episode 33, I think it is now, of the uh, boat restoration. And today I'm looking at doing the tow hitch on the car. Now I've got a list of instructions here. I'm just running through it for the time being. Uh, it's quite an involved job actually, it's a bit more than I originally thought. <coughs> got to be careful not to fall down the hole. I've got the pit open. But uh, I've uh, always done some of the mechanics on my car. Any car that I've had. Um, brake changing, you know, brake pad changing and uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, I had two MGBs, a Roadster and a GT. And I worked on both of those constantly. Constantly. Like the fourth bridge. Um, over the years I had them. And... Uh, I've always done the brakes on the uh, later cars. The engines nowadays are, s are too complicated for me to work on. Uh, they're not the old Meccano stuff like they used to be. And uh, so I leave them alone. But if I can think I can do something, then I'll do it. And I sort of know my limitations. And this uh, tow hitch thing is uh, quite a funny job actually. Well, this is the tow hitch kit. It's a Witter trailer tow hitch kit, which I bought some time ago now, well over a year ago, and it's very substantial. There's not a lot of parts to it, loads of bolts and nuts and such like as well, but uh, it comes with the electric hookup as well, and all the connectors and even a little audible warning device to show that your indicators are working. And the instructions, which you can't really read on the printed piece there but uh, they're pretty well comprehensive as well it's um, a job I've been sort of wanting to do and putting off and wanting to do and putting off uh, for a while and I've got to the point now where I need to do it anyway um, it's sort of like a little bit scary sort of thing to take apart your, your car and drill loads of holes and bolt things in especially as for this it's a Kia Karenz I can't actually find very much about them on the internet and certainly Haynes don't do a manual for them and there's nothing Kia Karenz on YouTube there are other videos of fitting uh, tow hitches to cars and looking at it they're all pretty much the same as each other but um, the actual operation or the video of the operation of putting in a new fitting the hitch is quite, uh, what, what, what would I say, um, glossed over. You get your trailer hitch, you take the bumper off and you've put the new one, bang, bingo, there you go. And they don't even show you doing up the old stuff and putting it all back into place. <coughs> Which is um, pretty much par for a lot of courses in YouTube in some ways. I have learnt a lot of it, but there are also a lot of, of these um, how-to videos that leave a lot to be desired. So hopefully this one might be one that people can follow. So there's all the bits on the bench and as I say I sort of glossed over reading the uh, the instructions until now but I thought I'll get the instructions together with me doing it and looking at it physically and I'll have a better idea. It is straightforward but it involves a lot of stuff. So I've got a pit in my garage which I'm very fortunate to have and I can get down there and sit on a stool and I'm just about the right height for everything even though the guy I think who originally built it probably could have stood up in it going by the height of the garage door when I have moved here. Anyway enough of that. So I've got to take the back bumper off which goes all the way around to the back of the wheel arches and it's fixed around there around the mud flaps and then all the way along there there's fixings underneath there's fixings onto the bumper bracket which is actually the bit that takes most of the, the force in a rear impact and it's a substantial sort of girder which the one on the bench replaces and also reading the instructions this is the bit I don't like I have to take out the interior certainly the bottom half there's a line there which runs across just below the window which are on both sides which is uh, the panel split into two 
but it goes down to the back of the front uh, of the rear door which is the a C pillar and wraps around there as well and there's various screws around and I've got to find all of those now I thought it might take a little while and I think it's going to take longer than I ever imagined and this is one of the reasons why I've been putting it off really I suppose because as for this week I wanted to get in on this on Monday morning but some work came in and then what's it now uh, it's Wednesday afternoon or is it Thursday it might be Thursday actually I think it's Thursday today um, various things have thrown up in my face to stop me getting on it at the start of the day and uh, now if I take this apart that will going to be all day Friday and then possibly Saturday when it back together but Sunday I need the car because we've got a gig so I need to be able to put all the gear in there so if I'm still halfway through doing it then it's going to bugger me up for the gig so I'm now going to wait till Monday but I've got to get a stubby screwdriver which is something I've never owned because some of the bolts underneath the uh, bumper there's very little room to get a screwdriver in to undo them and there's a uh, another problem my uh, inspection lamp fell down there and broke so I need a new inspection lamp for one I have that got broke didn't have any uh, had a hook broken off it anyway so it wasn't over there's nowhere to hang it so it just got caught up and then fell down in there and smashed and so I'm going to put everything back together now with not quite so many of the things uh, the fixings and then it was not the bumper's not going to drop off and come back to it on Monday also it says remove the light clusters as well so there's an awful lot of removing to do I suppose if you're a mechanic or a, a fitter specialist fitter you probably uh, sort of just go at it and do it I don't know how long it would take you at all I've no idea but um, I fancy having a go at this myself I'm sure I can do it it's not rocket science it's just a case of knowing how many screws to take out and uh, whereabouts they are so that's what I'm going to do now is just put this back together temporarily and then get back to it on Monday morning bright and early Well, I know one thing about the uh, videos I watched in YouTube about fitting tow bars. They never ever done anything like this. They just scanned over or scrimped over the operations involved in fitting a tow bar. And this has taken me best part of an hour to get undone so far. Um, even down to this side the last screw in it is down halfway along the uh, back door on the uh, sill and it's buried underneath another closer that covers up like a, as a foot, footstep on the uh, top side of the sill I'm sure it's all going to go back right this is one, one thing that uh, I've done in the past and a couple of free times and they never like to go back how they came out but they were older cars there was an Alpha Sud and the two MGs and the door cards were made of flimsy um, what's it called fiberboard stuff um, I can't think what it's called now Masonite is a, a name for it it's sort of shiny and it's made of well, shiny on one side and dull on the other and it's made from pressed sort of wood fibers or paper fibers and uh, because of all the flexing and shrinking that they that goes on with them they never went back properly but these I think because they're molded plastic will go back right but uh, I was talking to my mate yesterday and he reckoned it cost him over 700 quid to have a tow bar fitted on his 
uh, Volvo when he bought it, and that was a pretty new car. Um, I mean, you know, if you think a couple of hundred quid for the tow bar, maybe, and then 500 odd quid for the fitting, I suppose it sort of makes sense when you see what you've got to do. But um, certainly it's slightly more involved. I've even got to take the wheels off to get the, uh, there's some screws on the uh, mud flaps on the inside of the wheel arch, which even with my new stubby screwdrivers, I can't get to, so I've got to take the wheels off. So I thought, all right, I'll get the cards out the inside, out the way, and then I can lift up and take the uh, the wheels off under those screws, and then um, the ones underneath the bumper, and hopefully we'll be able to prise that off, and then I shall put the wheels back on temporarily whilst I'm uh, doing this, because it doesn't take too long to put the wheels on and off, he says. <laughs> Boat's getting wet. Can't believe it. This is, uh, just into the second week in August, nearly. It's the 12th today. And we had the high winds over the weekend. And then got thunder in that today as well. So, if there's no water in the boat, we know it leaks. Well, it seems like you do have to take the lights off to get the bumper off. I still haven't got it off yet as such, but uh, it's nearly there at the moment. But there's screws around the wheel arch on the th about one o'clock. If you look at the wheel arch, there's about one a screw on each side about one o'clock, and then there's three along the back edge of the um, where the mud guard is, the mud flap, and then there's two under each of the light clusters. So you have to take them off. So that's another four nuts and bolts. There's nothing hard about this job. It's just purely the fact that to put in, what is there, there's two, four, I think there's eight, ten, maybe ten studs, twelve, at most, twelve max studs that hold the tow hitch on and the bracket for it onto the chassis members and everything. And yet there's bloody hundreds of these horrible little screwy fastener, fastener things that uh, to involved in putting them on and you've got to strip out half the back end of the car to do it I uh, I really can't see it being a cheap job to do because of the amount of work involved even if you're a mechanic who's done it or a specialist who's done it over and over each car's going to be different I mean, they're all going to have their own problems but even to take the, have to take the road wheels off to get to some of the screws is just like Unbelievable. And these flimsy old bumpers, I think they're uh, they're made like that because um, they uh, they're a little cash cow for people when they get knocked in a bumper to bumper shunt. I'm not moaning, honestly. I'm not moaning. It's just like far more little fiddly stuff than I ever imagined. Certainly a lot harder to work on the car these days than it used to be on the MGs. But it's all Meccano. And, uh, but, I don't know. It is getting looser. But I'm just playing around now with these. They're actually quite handy. They're um, just plastic. But they're like uh, chisel sort of levery type things. Gemmies for, uh, for getting the all the things out. I couldn't, couldn't have got this out without using this I think and I, I saw them being used on YouTube and I was looking for um, what uh, sort of was involved in doing this and um, I, uh, I'm glad I bought them. They weren't very expensive but they were worth their weight really. So I'm just going around pulling and prodding and twisting until I get the uh, get the bumper off, then I think I'm going to call that a day for today because uh, I'm getting angry.
there's two straps, one there and one there holding it on. What are you meant to do with those? Well, if there's one positive that's come out of uh, yesterday so far, that is that the bilge was full up with water. And it's still got the same level in it today. There's a tiny little weep off of the bung at this end. But that's possibly because it's not been tightened up fully. I just put it in and just knocked it tight. But none of the water's leaked out really appreciably. I didn't make a mark or anything. But that's just where it was yesterday and when I finished up so when I take the boat out so they to get the car back in I shall open the drain plug and let it all run out. I checked in the four deck hatch last night and it's bone drying now which again is another good sign. When you take the bone plug out you just put it inside the keel of the boat somewhere it won't get lost. We've got Dottie helping us today, looking after the Jimmy. Where's she gone? She, she won't settle down for ages. Anyway, the uh, two straps that were holding the bumper on, in the end, I couldn't see any other way of doing it, so I just cut them. The, uh, the strap covered the bolt that's on the back here of this cross member, which actually I thought was metal, but it looks like it's uh, fiberglass, plastic of some sort, it's very tough. And it says in the instructions that you take that off and hand it to the customer. Um, I was wondering actually whether it didn't go back on once the cross member had gone on, but um, I'm not sure, it probably doesn't. But anyway, we'll find out one way or another because the tabs along the bottom of that cross member um, hold the bottom of the bumper on. At each end of that fiberglass cross member was held on by four bolts onto a, a plate which went through the back of the back valance of the car and onto the uh, chassis rails, so I'm not sure if I needed to have actually undone those. As it happened, the two bottom ones on each side sheared because they were rusted up, whereas the two top ones were clean. Obviously, uh, they get exposed to the water and that that's chucked under the car. But these are the two bolts that hold the um, stanchion, for want of a better word, onto the chassis rail. And I'm just loosening them off now, and the, that uh, stanchion faceplate has become loose so I'm going to take them out and that's where the new chassis rails uh, supports for the cross member bolt in but there's also some more holes to drill through that line up with some holes in the bottom rail where you drop the nuts uh, the bolts through and then tighten up the nuts so you've got to put those on using those two bolts as a guide and then use the uh, plate as a template for drilling the new holes which should locate with the holes in the chassis rails underneath the car. So far it really looks like it's lining up. But I needn't possibly have actually needed to take the uh, plastic cross member off of the mounting plates. But uh, I didn't make that clear in the instructions. Anyway it ain't going back on again. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know if I go and if I do, some, this car is going to be my car until it's the end of its days. And uh, that's the way I work with cars. I think it's a far greener way of doing things than trading them in. Unless uh, something drastic happens with the uh, way the government funds new cars or buyback deals, whatever they call them. Normally the last trip I do in the car is to the scrappy. 
so I'm not sure whether I'd take this off and put it and sell it again or not because how many more Carenzas would be around by then? We'll see. Either way, it doesn't matter because even if I drive it without it, or if I take it out, it's only one last five mile journey. What I've done here is I've bolted the cross member on to the chassis legs and put the plates in place and they're bolted through as well. You can't quite see the bolts from here but the front two that the existing bumper was mounted onto. I've got two of the bolts going through each of the plates because I've got to get everything locked into place so that when I draw through those holes using the plate as a template those holes there there's another one uh, they line up with the chassis members on the car so if I get everything nice and locked in place then they should all fall into place because there was some wriggle room in the uh, plates before they were done up so that's the next job now just to nip them all up give it a shake and nip them up and then we'll be able to drill those other holes and then uh, take it all apart again because after that I've got to open up the holes I've just drilled so that some bushings which are over here on the bench there's eight bushings there they um, go through just drop into place and then you put the bolts through they support and stop you tightening up too much and bending the chassis rails because they're only normal car steel they're nothing special and heavy I'll go back to the old MGs again they had some uh, some heavy chassis rails a sort of like a subframe off of the castle rails and the and the sills which sort of helped to stiffen everything up especially on the road stuff obviously because it's a soft top so uh, <laughs> car technology has moved on a lot you may also guess that I'm a lot happier today than I was yesterday when I was stripping things down. It's um, it's just like the, the ruining things is the horrible part. And I watched a bit of uh, Doug on SV Seeker today. I found it came up on the feed from about six, seven years ago, maybe when he first started making the uh, SV Seeker boat. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, it's worth a look at. He calls it the boat that the internet built, and uh, he gets. He started off with himself, and a couple of mates were helping him out here and there, and his his partner or his wife, and they built from scratch an origami boat. It's a, a Chinese junk sort of style thing. Well, he never lets anything let him get him down. He always says, uh, "Just get on and fix it." or bodge it or anything so uh, I watched a bit of him today and he's a he's a bit of an inspiration in that respect because uh, he's done some amazing things you can do some amazing things if you try and then you can do some mundane things like fit a tow bar I've drilled the two extra holes on each side one of them you just have to go through the boot floor and the other one you have to go through the chassis leg as well and they've been done with a 10mm draw bit. Um, the next operation is actually to remove these plates and open up the holes in the boot floor to 19mm. Well, I've got a 20mm hole saw, but it goes from 18 to 20 And I've been a bit reluctant to make the holes oversized, albeit half mil clearance all the way around. I just think uh, it stipulates 19, the bushes are 19 mil, and so to that end I went up to screw fix, but they don't do any uh, 19 mil bits, they go to a 20, they go 18 and 20, and so did B&Q, so I got a set of these, there's three of them, and this is the widest one, this goes up to 30 mil, I think it is, 16 to 30 mil, so if I measure and mark the 19 mil mark as I go through it I can keep offering in the bush until it's just big enough for the bushing to go in 
So yeah, there are some times when a 20mm hole will do for a 19mm object, but um, there are some times when it says it in the label, in the thing, it doesn't say go to 20mm, it goes 19 so that's what I'm going to do. I've gone on to shaky cam again. I can get three of the holes widened out to 19mm, but this last one is impossible. This one was difficult enough, I had to do it at an angle and then just finish it off a few strokes with a file to straighten up the hole. But the far one, you'd obviously have to have one of those angle driven drivers, um, which is probably even run on a compressor. I've got a compressor, but I'm not sure I really want to spring for a, an angle drive drill to uh, to drill that one. And there's a dish underneath here. There's a, this area here has been dished out underneath, obviously to set the bolts in deeper. And up here it is as well, a bit. And those spaces, those bushes, come right up level with the with the plate so uh, I'm thinking one possibility would be to cut that bush down level to the height of oh, I'm jerking this around would be to cut that bush down just to fit in there or to not bother because the fish plate will spread out the load right the way across there anyway and with the washer underneath it will probably be Good enough. I mean, this is a six mil piece of angle iron. It runs up through the chassis rail, so it's a box section effectively, anyway, inside. And then this is all supportive. And there's not really any up and down movement. I know it's bolted up the other side as well at the moment, but there's not very much up and down movement. I have a feeling that that will be good enough. Now, three of the bushes with all the sleeves, and this last one not have. Just have a. Well, they're all going to have big penny washers on anyway, so that spreads out the load. I suppose if I had a look around. I could even make up a square washer to go on the bottom of there, which will spread out the load even more. So uh, I'll do these three up and do the other side and then have a think about it. That's the new tow bar bolted into place. I did put one of the spacers on, it's actually on the uh, driver's side, I cut it down and put it on but it was about a millimetre short and I think it might end up rattling. But the other side I cut to the same length and it's a couple of millimetres too tall actually. So uh, I tried filing it down a bit but in the end I thought uh, that'd be alright. There's three of them with the spacers and that last one is 50 mil away from the first one with the spacers. So the 6 mil plate, the 6 mil angle iron and everything else all together with the big penny washers that's as sturdy as anything anyway and so uh, that bit's done now so it's a case of uh, I've got some brackets to put on to hold the bumper when it goes back on which I'm going to do tomorrow if you can hear the seagulls they're all returning home from the tip now we live about two miles away from the sea and all the seagulls live around here and they go inland to Canterbury to Broad Oak to the tip every day I'm convinced because uh, every time we went over there to drop stuff off there was always millions of seagulls following the scraper around as it pushes all the rubbish over and flattens it out 
So um, I'm going to uh, put everything away now for the night and uh, go in a happy bunny because uh, I'm a lot happier today than I was yesterday. But then I haven't tried putting the bumper back on yet and all the uh, linings inside either. But tomorrow I've got to do the, uh, the wiring for the socket that bolts on with the tow hitch onto that bar at the bottom. Tomorrow's another day.